in light of the removal of the red statue from UCT after weeks of protests, we're talking to someone who was a student activist himself in his younger days. He was even expelled from university for his involvement in the fight against apartheid. I'm talking about none other than struggle veteran and cope leader Musiwa Likot. And Dr. Likot, good morning. Thank you very much for coming in. Good morning, Ed, and, and good morning to the listeners. Student activism played a very important part in this country's fight against apartheid, as, as we know, as we've heard, and you were part of that. Yes. What's the significance of seeing students today for you sort of rising up for transformation in our universities? Well, let me say what is, what is very important is that at, at any given uh, time, in fact, every generation has its young people, and young people are very energetic. They are uh, not very shy. Uh, issues which uh, senior citizens will, will approach with uh, trepidation, they tend to be a bit rough. Now, the two things happen in the, in the process of activism of young people. Some of the activism is very rational, it's well thought out, but some of the issues are not well thought out. If you take the earlier period of the debate between what South Africa would become, would it become a non-racial South Africa, or were the, were the white sections of the population to be sent back to Europe? We know those arguments that arose at that time. It was as a result of the engagement in those debates that in the end, the more rational, non-racial future was preferred and supported by the majority. Now, it's very important what the students are doing at the present time to say we need to ensure that uh, transformation happens. Now, again, it's important to identify when you talk about transformation, transformation of what and how. I don't think that debate of how and what has been engaged with. Because if you don't do that, you may destroy even things that you actually need. When I look at an institution like uh, Terfloop, where we were students in our time, uh, first of all, it was segregated. Secondly, it provided for young blacks, very limited uh, facilities. Uh, the courses that were offered were limited. Uh, you could study pharmacy in Telfrop. You could not study pharmacy in uh, KZN, where, what was then Ngoye and others. If you, were, if you were black of the black communities, you could go to Telfrop for that and so on. So this kind of thing, there was limitation how many students could be allowed to study science and things like that. So we had to grapple with issues that were directly impacting on whether there was education for opportunities available for black students, even in those institutions that were supposed to be for blacks and so on. The Cecil John Road statue seems to be a symbolic trigger, so to speak, to say we need change in our, in our university. We're hearing now, from, for example, from the SRC at the University of Cape Town, that they want to focus now on the marginalized uh, uh, sections of that university to say, you know, these people must also be taken care of uh, uh, properly. Do you think this is the beginning of them tackling those issues and saying how and what? Well, I said there are two issues there. One is what you want to transform and how. The sad thing about uh, the Cape Town thing is this culture of coming with feces and throwing feces around immediately, you know, turns one away from it. Because what message are you conveying? Why couldn't the students call on the university council to say we want transformation and here is our demand, we want you to change this, we want you to change that and this and that and the other. So we didn't hear about that. The first thing we saw was this crude, misdirected uh, and, and frankly sad uh, development. The second thing is, sorry, the second thing is uh, when you attack an issue, you must discriminate. Is there something positive? Is there something negative? What is positive must be preserved. 
after all, history has happened, and we can't undo it. Now, it can be undone that Rhodes contributed from his wealth, however he acquired it. He worked uh, on cotton fields. He, was, he dug diamonds with his hands, built his wealth, and when he was wealthy, he contributed the land on which the university stood. He identified the fact that in order to get university education, he had to go back to Oxford in England and decided it is important that we create this facility here. So all of this is very positive. Probably one of the things that inspired President Mandela to join with Mandela Rhodes Foundation to further expand and modernize and render non-racial what had already been done. So those kind of things should have been discussed. Okay, our history is with us. As you said, we can't yes. deny it, it happened. Yes. But there are also, there'll be positive and negatives. That's right. If, if you look back. Yes. Now, you as a student activist at the time and looking at today, what would your advice be to young people to ensure that the right kind of processes are put in place, the right kind of debates are happening to achieve the right kind of transformation? I think the students uh, ought to call meetings of their own, discuss rationally. What is it we want to change? How do we want to change it? Etc. Etc. What is it that we want to preserve? And they must not be afraid. You see, in that institution, you have some of the most outstanding, and in my view, you know, people that I really high, hold in very high regard, uh, and whom I know want change. If you take people like uh, Professor Njabulon Devel, you take people like uh, who was earlier also associated with the university, Mampila Rampila, people like the Reverend Dungan. These are people that we know have been always with us in the forefront of change. Engage them in discussion. Amass as much information as possible. And then say, now this is what we want. And once it's like that, you have a collaboration, so to say, between a generational collaboration. And then even the mistakes which have been made in the past, they'll be able to say, look, we, we also thought this way, but we made that mistake, and please don't repeat that, so that whatever this generation contributes must build on the achievements of those who went ahead of them. But when a generational uh, lack of communication leads to confusion and contradiction, we defeat the direction we have been uh, driving and that we want to achieve. Thank you very much for the yes. insights. The struggle veteran and cope leader, Musiwa Likot. And still coming up here on Morning News Today.